Hey everyone, it's Shama back again for yet another Ask a Black Belt. Today we have a very special guest. We have Heather Rafferty. She's a black belt out of Otto's team. If you haven't been a part of these sessions before, this is how it works. You ask questions, answer. As simple as that. So if you have any questions for Heather, feel free to post it. And uh, this should be a lot of fun. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Great. How are you, Shama? Oh, I'm doing good. Doing good. I, I, so uh, where are you at now? I know where in the world is Heather's <laughs> always been a question. <laughs> so I'm currently in Tucson, Arizona. Um, this is actually my hometown. So I, I went kind of full circle, kind of went from the kind of mid uh mid us to the the east coast to the west coast and now i'm back in tucson for a little bit oh good good mm -hmm. so so tell us a little bit for all those people watching today tell us a little bit about yourself um oh gosh where do i start <laughs> <laughs> um like i said i was born here in tucson um i actually my my parents are horse trainers and so for a good portion of my life i grew up riding horses and uh i was competitive in it so for about 10 years i rode horse what's called cutting horses and so that was the equestrian event that my dad trained um so i traveled all over the u.s kind of doing that and um went to college started uh, supporting myself and, and riding horses competitively is so expensive. <laughs> so I had to kind of quit that, put it on the back burner. Um, and then I started traveling, which is, you know, my, my absolute first love. Um, and so I started traveling a little bit and uh, not like, you know, tourism type traveling. I, you know, I did a I went to France for a research trip, and then I, my second time out of the country was in Guatemala, you know, 10 years after the peace accord, so it's still kind of a sketchy place to be, um, but I studied abroad there during college, and, you know, I, my dad started to become a little worried about my traveling habits, and uh, so he told me that I needed to start, you know, doing some sort of self-defense, martial art, whatever, mm -hmm. and... Um, so I did. I, I joined a local gym not too far from the University of Arizona, and it had kickboxing and MMA and boxing, and it had weights. And, you know, at the same time, there was this kickboxing, cardio kickboxing class. There was a jujitsu class. And after a couple of weeks of cardio kickboxing, I thought, well, that looks like a lot of fun and, <laughs> and joined, stepped on the mats and never left. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So. So, so you are someone who, when I think about the jujitsu journey, I think you've had, you've taken full advantage of what that actually means. Um, <laughs> I remember when I met you in Colorado, gosh, this was seven oh. years ago, eight years ago. Maybe yeah, probably. <laughs> And then you were off to Florida and then you went to um, California and then everywhere in between. Um, I'm sure it's a hard, like, what is your thoughts? And I, I know I've talked to you about this before. We've talked to you about this before. If through your experiences of cross training, of taking advantage of every training opportunity you've had. So, so what is some advice that you can give someone who's maybe never stepped out of their home academy, having gone out, having cross trained? What are some, mm. like, a little tidbit that you can offer them? Uh, yeah, just, you know, don't be afraid to do it. Uh, number one, um, I know it's it's intimidating to maybe walk into a, an unfamiliar gym where you don't know the people, um, you don't know, you know, how you'll be welcomed. Um, but in, in all of my journeys, I've always had a really warm welcome. And I don't know if it's, you know, because I, being a female, you kind of have that advantage. There's not as many, I mean, now there are just so many more women training and it's amazing but even then, we're still the minority in any gym. So I think, you know, going to a different gym, wherever you're traveling, you know, um, you're always welcome because, you know, at the very least, the professors there would love for their girls to train with a new girl, you know. So it's really, um, 
you know, for anybody who's a little bit tra- uh, timid about going to a new gym, that's that's the first thing that I, I try to emphasize is, you know, you're always going to be welcome there, um, you know, from my experience as a, a female uh, practitioner. And number two, always, always, and this goes with just everything in life is, you know, go in there with the best of intentions and no ego. You know, it's their home. They have, they're welcoming you in and you should, you know, respect their rules, respect, you know, whatever they may, they, uh, regulations they might have, you know, for example, if, you know, you have to wear their gi, fine, you know, like I, I'm not, you know, I love, you know, representing, you know, my teams, my, as autos, but, you know, if the, the uniform requirements say, you know, I have to wear one of their geese. It's fine. It's just a gi, you know? Um, so those would be the two things I would say if for somebody who's kind of looking to step outside their home ed- academy, at least, you know, visiting yeah. anyway. <laughs> and I think that applies to even when you're traveling, you know? Oh yeah. You're I a visitor. <laughs> <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you are a guest. <laughs> You're not coming in there like, I own this. This is my place. <laughs> right, right. Which is, you know, unfortunately is kind of uh, Americans get a bad rap for that. <laughs> but when we all should do a better job, you know, of course, I could always do a better job and, you know, being, you know, keeping that in mind when I travel, you know, making sure that I experience, you know, traveling through the eyes of the locals but also, you know, just letting them show me, you know, what their culture is, what their, you know, way of life is without having, bringing any kind of expectations or ego from, you know, where I come from. Absolutely. No, I, I completely agree with you, especially being in Hawaii, you know. It, oh, it, yeah. It's really another country. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Very different culturally. <laughs> And you're bombarded like, all the time by tourists. <laughs> yeah, you're like, tourists, 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 tourists. Howling tourists. <laughs> but not right now, unfortunately. That's, that's the sad part. But um, Yeah. But so, so I know you, you, I mean, you jumped in your van. You, you lived the dream for a lot of people, you know, where you just, the open road was your home. And... What has been, and I'm sure you got so many, but what is your favorite memory that you have? Like, or one of many, which I'm sure are many. Oh, gosh, there are so many. Um, just regarding van life? <laughs> or jiu-jitsu and van life. Jiu-jitsu and van life. Um, you know, it's it's not a single memory. Um, it's you know, just kind of the, the ease of, you know, I was, I wasn't just training and, and, and sleeping, you know, I I was also working at the same time, but being able to have my van wherever I went, you know, I could just like, especially training at an autos, um, you know, it's such intense training that, I would just take a shower at the gym and go and take a nap. (laughs) It was the best. I had my bus right there outside of the academy and I could just, you know, crawl out of the academy and crawl into my van and just take a nap before I could do anything else. (laughs) So that was quite, that was nice. I I do miss that. (laughs) I bet that's good too if you want to train multiple times a day, just like in between and then go back to the (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. No, ha- not worrying about, you know, driving through traffic to get back to the academy or get back to my house. Um, so that was nice. And, you know, just the simplicity of it, you know, you, you don't have a lot of stuff. Um, you don't have a lot to worry about. <laughs> so no mortgages, no like water bill. Um, I mean, definitely like you have to maintain a, um, like a 24 hour fitness membership. And, you know, I had, I was taking showers at the Academy, at the yoga studio and at 24 hour fitness. So (laughs) cleanliness, I was never, it was never an issue, but I had to make sure that, you know, I had that set up, you know, I couldn't just, just go and do it by myself. (laughs) No, I I totally understand. I, I've, I've actually been looking into that a little bit lately myself. Um, just yeah. 
But I'm on an island, so it's like I can go around it. <laughs> yeah. It's like not very far. I can go. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh! So if you guys watching have any questions, chime in. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep gabbing here. <laughs> so, oh. I think for- there was a couple of questions. Oh, maybe at the top. Let's see. Let me go back. I see my favorite training partner, and what gym? I think we covered that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, the the gym I'm I'm training at now actually is um. So I I'm still an Autos black belt and still register under events as Autos, but since moving to Tucson, I've been training quite a bit with um. You know, I, I train a little bit with my my first very first gym undisputed in tucson and there's a lot of really cool guys there and and they train mostly in the gi but in the last i would say in the last year i've really been focusing on my no gi and um part of you know that has been training with 10th planet tucson (laughs) and actually um i train with the the owner of 10th planet tucson tony burchek he's a former ufc fighter and he and I went to school together. We were actually in the same grade. Oh, that's <laughs> and, uh, really wild. I, I didn't. I had no idea. I, I, with the the money that I had saved, um, you know, living in my bus, I was able to put a down payment on a house. Okay. Little did I know, my house was less than half a mile from his academy, and I was driving to the grocery store, and I looked to the side and I was like oh my gosh there's a a 10th planet gym and I'd always been pretty close with the 10th planet crew they're all they've always been really welcoming the boogie out there in San Diego especially and so I popped in one day and whoa there was Tony (laughs) and so I've been training with Tony quite a bit um and he has incredible wrestling he was a d1 wrestler and with the 10 planet guys, they, they love their leg locks. So those have been two of the things that I, I've always kind of wanted to improve. And so now in the last year, definitely, um, that's what I've been working on. Awesome. What, what are some goals that you have moving forward? Do you want to hit? I know that a lot of like fight to win and a lot of the big, bigger platforms are out there. Do you have any plans on doing anything competitively anytime soon or I I know everybody's kind of at a different place right now with everything yeah no definitely um actually I just uh signed up for an Artemis sub uh series out there in Knoxville Tennessee um I guess it's a a woman promoter and she has this uh I think it's either an uh, an eight woman uh tournament and under 80 cc rules and so that's exciting. And, and that's, that's the reason I signed up. Um, and as far as goals, like that's, that's always been one of my longest standing goals is to, to go to ADCC world championships. Um, I've always been a Nogi girl. Um, you know, I do both, but I started out completely Nogi for two and a half years. And so Nogi is just, I, you know, whenever I, t- I peel off the gi, I just feel like I'm in my element. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> Um, and I love the rule set, you know, ADCC rule set is so much fun. Um, so I'm going out there November 14th. Um, I, I'm not sure how they're going to stream it, maybe on their Instagram or their Facebook. Um, so there's that. And I was signed up for uh, the ADCC trials, you know, Tom DeBlast had, even though the East Coast trials doesn't count for us, um, Tom DeBlast opened up, you know, a division for the women just so they, they could get another tournament under ADCC rules um but unfortunately they had to postpone that um because they couldn't get the refs you know over from uh the UAE um but that's that's my goal is for sure um ADCC West Coast Trials win that baby and you know go to ADC World Champions World Championships (laughs) (laughs) no I think I think that's any every competitor is goal oh that is like you know that's that's the top you know if you're a, a jiu-jitsu practitioner you want you know an 80 cc medal <laughs> i don't even care what color it is i just want one <laughs> i know you've had a lot of coaches and instructors and mentors over the years what is some of the best advice that you've gotten 
Oh, wow. Or something that really stuck with you and just kind of, you still kind of hold true is maybe part of your values or, or just an outlook or advice on how you compete or anything. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been really fortunate in having tremendous instructors. Um, you know, I started with Josh Hinger and he gave me my blue belt. And then I, I had a couple of really amazing instructors out in Colorado. And then, you know, I got my brown belt from Robert, Roberto Cyborg, you know, Abreu, out in fight sports. And, and then my black from Andre. And they've all kind of given me different different things. Um, but I think, you know, working at, at Autos, I wouldn't say it's, there's any one thing that he's told me, but being in that culture, it's, you know, you, you fight until the end, you know, kind of thing. You, you don't stop fighting. There's, there is no quit regardless of whether you're, you're winning by this and, you know, this many points or, you know, losing by this many points it it you put your entire heart and soul into it um till the end and you know it's being in work being training in the competition class is like puts that into you you know whether or not you try for it it creates that <laughs> because <laughs> it's just such a grind um but yeah i i don't know i i've learned a lot from from a lot of people um you know, from uh, Cyborg, he's, again, not, not any one thing that he has said, but just the way he interacts with everybody at tournaments, you know, and he's, he's always so classy and, and so nice to everybody. Um, and so I try to bring that into to how I compete and how I interact with, with all of my fellow competitors, you know, as I, when, when I step on the mat, it's, it's go time, you know, I, I'm going to win. But, you know, I, I'm always going to be friendly to you before and after the mat. You know, it's because you are my jujitsu sister. You know, you are one of the few women in the world who train this incredible sport. And so, like, at the very least, I respect that. And, and you know, I'm going to give you a hug before and after, you know, <laughs> I could be. It's amazing to see, like, you kind of touched on it earlier. I remember, like, I mean, even even go back maybe eight, five, eight years ago, there weren't promoters putting on women only no. tournaments. <laughs> Nonetheless, like, putting them on a streaming platform that people have to, like, pay for to watch, you know? It, right. just, it, it was, they were like, there's no money in women. I've never even heard promoters say that. There's no money in, I mean doing what I do for so long, it's like, have you ever watched these women compete? Right! We have the best <laughs> matches. They are the most intense. <laughs> they are. It's like brawling, and then afterwards, it's like, oh, I love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> right. You know, it's like every match, you know? And I think that's, I think it's beautiful. I think it's amazing to see how far we've come. I can't even imagine the next generation, the generation after where it's going to go. I think I think the sky's the limit. Oh, for sure. It's going to be incredible to see. And, you know, I don't know if I'll, I'll still, you know, have all my, my body parts together enough <laughs> to compete, you know, but it's going to still, you know, when I'm out, and, you know, masters three, four, or five, they, they have it. What is it up to? Seven. Like masters seven now that they, I think right? So. I think. Like it's good, still going to be exciting to watch all of these girls, you know, just kicking ass and you know <laughs> uh, it's jujitsu changed my life so much it's it's an i always tell everybody i meet you know if you have daughters get her in jujitsu because it it will you will never have to worry about her <laughs> <laughs> no it's true and it's and i think it a huge influx that i've seen is dads like your dad encouraging their daughters to be strong and independent and able to take care of themselves in situations. Mm -hmm. Whereas you go back to our parents' generation or, you know, earlier, it's like, well, get married so you can have somebody. <laughs> right. You know, it's like, it's really cool just in the feminist women's movement to see that progression within our male-dominated sport, I think. Is oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to go ahead and close it out with this uh, last 
final question. Mm -hmm. What is something that maybe people don't know about you that you'd be willing to reveal? Something that... Oh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> it could be anything. It doesn't have to be scandalous. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to think, scandalous or not, I don't think there's anything that I really, like, keep close to heart, <laughs> you know? Um, gosh, that's a stumper. I, I think, you know, between Instagram and Facebook, I think pr people pretty much, you know, they you get what I am. <laughs> you know? um, Jeez. Nice. Well, think, go ahead. I think, you know, I have a, um, a really, really, uh, soft spot for, for underdogs, but I think a lot of people already know that. Um, you know, when I was, uh, when I was in middle school, I was bullied and I think, you know, it's, it's interesting. Hindsight is twenty twenty, And I think I, looking back, I kind of, you know, appreciate that I was bullied because it gave me that sense of, you know, knowing that I, I experienced that. I don't want anyone else around me to experience that. So when I see an underdog, man, I'm rooting for them. I'm, I'm welcoming them, welcoming them in, you know, if it's, you know, that, that's, I think that's why the 10th planet guys are, you know, some of my favorite people because they're all, a little weird, you know, and, but everybody's a little weird at heart, you know, and it's, it's, I like that they, they make that like, okay, you know, it's very like, if you're weird, you're awesome, you know, kind of thing. And so, um, you know, jujitsu in general, I think allows, you know, some of, some people who are, who are kind of, you know, misfits to, to be really successful. Um, so I think, you know, having been bullied, it maybe pushed me in that direction of jujitsu because I, I, I saw the power in jujitsu and, you know, even within jujitsu, I, because I was bullied, I, I always look for the people that are, are, might've been bullied in the past and uplift them. Oh, that was perfect. That was, that was like, that was way better than any scandal. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was beautiful. I think, I think that summed up you know, I summed up who you are in a lot of ways is, is you really do. You, I've always seen with your work professionally, with your, what you do in the jujitsu scene, I think absolutely you're, you're advocating for the underdog and we need people like you because yeah. there are a lot of underdogs. In oh world. yeah. And I love all each and every one of them, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of weirdos too. And we need each other. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Oh, it's always a pleasure talking with you. Likewise. <laughs> this is Hopefully, a lot of fun. Yeah. I don't know how long, much longer you'll be out there in Hawaii, but man, I've been due for a visit. So, yes. you know, maybe one of these days we'll, we'll be in the same place. Yes. I don't <laughs> think I'm the world. going anywhere for a while. So come on out. <laughs> oh, good. Good. <laughs> no, well, you take care. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. And, uh, you guys have a wonderful weekend. And if you guys are around tomorrow, we're doing a session with Emily Kwok. She's going to be teaching a class online. So go to girlsandease.com to sign up. And uh, thank you again, Heather. Awesome. And thank you, Shama. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care. <laughs> you too.